Okay. So that's set up. So go to your checklist. Um. And go all the way up to the top, obviously. And start off with parking position. First thing you want to do is set your parking brake. Uh, turn on your battery. The, ga um, the jetway, if I have AES, so it happens automatically. The jetway will move into place. Um, if not, just press Control J, and the jetway should move into place. And then turn on your battery. Your battery is right here. Let me actually go to a different view here. Okay, so yeah, your battery is right here, you just turn that on, and then co uh, put the black cover over, and then on your DC voltmeter, you want to have it select battery, so that would be just above the battery switch, It's uh, it's it should already be default battery, so you don't have to change that, and then um, check if you have 28 volts, usually I have 24, which is okay. Um, uh, and then you want standby power, so turn the, the AC voltmeter right uh, switch, turn it all the way down to standby power, and that should work. Um, master caution is your yellow indicators here. Just click it, reset them. Um, <clears throat> hydraulic pumps. You want all your hydraulic pumps to be off at the moment. All your fuel pumps should be off too. And then uh, if you need to, turn on your interior lights, which are these switches here. I'm not going to turn them on because I don't need them. Um, also there's one here. One, there's two here. And there's one more right here and here so those are all your light switch let me know if I'm going too fast for you also if you want me to slow down just right in the just right in the chat <clears throat> So once you have all your interior lights set, um, you want to, these are always checked, you just want to check that these are on, the cabin utility power and the IFE pass uh, seat power, they're right here, they're always set to on, so just check for that. Um, and then you want to connect to ground power. So you want to go to your FMC, go to FS actions ground connections. Um, your wheel truck should be set automatically, but you want ground power, air start unit, and air condition unit. Um, and then that should be good. And I got a phone call, so one sec. Hello? Hey, what's up?
Okay, I'm back. So where were we? So ground connections are on. Um, once you have them connected, uh, make sure you have PTOT covers uh, check removed. You don't want them. And then ground power, you want to select that on. So there's a little switch right here, just above the bus trans, and the uh, um, the generator switches and APU switch. You want to select that on. And and then also on the AC voltmeter selector, this basically selects uh, which power supply you want to use. So. Basically, every time you're switching from the APU to the, to the ground power and to the engines, you're switching this. So you want to switch it over to the right once and give it, uh, put it on ground power. Um, emergency lights, you want to arm and cover them. Right here is your emergency lights right above your fasten seat belts. Um, and and also your, your uh, uh, what, is, what are these again? Hydraulics, the hydraulic switches. Uh, so turn that on to arm. You don't. You can press it twice, but you don't want that. You just want to arm them, and then put the cover over. And then for your external lights, you want your position light to be steady. What was that? Hmm. Um. So yeah, you want your position lights to be steady. So all the way up, that would be steady. Um, and it would be this light right here. The second one to the right. Um, wheel well light on, so that's the very far one. And then also your wing light, which is the second white switch. Your logo light, which is the last switch closest to you, if you're captain. And that's it that and then you master caution again you want to disengage it if you have any lights and you don't so well, at least I don't seatbelt sign you want to have that on all right sorry wrong one you want to have it on or auto I usually have it set to auto um, now you want to figure out you want to plan your fuel now so go to menu, go to in your FMC, go to menu, go to FS actions, go to fuel, and then um, this is what I do. I use a website called fuelplanner.com. So go to that, select the aircraft you're using. Um, where is it? So I'm using a 737-900. I'm flying from Las Vegas to Portland. Um, and then use click on planner and it plans how much fuel you're going to need and how much reserve fuels you're going to need and the total fuel on board so I'm going to be using 16,492 pounds of fuel so once you've done that I'll give it I'll wait a little bit so that, let's see if you're catching up or what not what am I doing So um, once you've got your fuel planner and everything calculated, you wanna you wanna use uh, fuel on board. You wanna use this. Um, put it in your FMC one six four nine two, or like I'll be putting one six four nine two. You will be using whatever your fuel calculation is. So and just put it in uh, put it in this one, the top left total pounds add. 
Um, you should be good to go. Usually I'm landing with like 8% fuel left, roughly, which is realistic. You don't want to land with too much fuel because you don't want to be too heavy. Um, so that's good. And then you want to do, um, you press back and you want to go to payload. I usually like to do like a full payload, so like almost like 150 in coach class. Oops, 150. And then like 10 in first class. Actually, I'm a little bit too heavy. Low level is 101.9%, so 130. That's better. That's good. So once you've set your payload, you're good to go. Move on to the next thing on the checklist. So you want your resuscitation fans set to auto. Your resuscitation fans are from the captain's seat all the way over here. So the top one here. Depending on what 737 you're using, I think you have the 800 and the 900. Um, if you're using the 600 or the 700, there'll only be one switch, and it'll be this one right here. But in this case, there's two, so if you have one or two, just turn this one on. If you have both, turn them both on. So those are your resuscitation fans. You want to check your autopilot is all off, and disengage the bar as well. Um, you want to turn your packs on, and your... <clears throat> go to overhead. So you want to turn your left pack on, your right pack on, and your isolation valve on as well. Or I mean you want to set them all to auto. So all these set to auto. Um, turn your APU, APU bleed, actually no, never mind, leave that one on. Um, Alright, cockpit voice recorder. It's not really simulated. But if you want to go for realism, you can check it. Actually, you can't really see it from this view. So, cockpit voice recorder is this. To test it, it's right here. To erase what has been said is right here, which is actually illegal to do. <laughs> I'm pretty sure because the FAA requires you to have a cockpit voice recorder in the cockpit. So, to test it, just hold down the green button, and you should see a green light appear right next to it. That means it's working. <laughs> Um, and then you want you do you want to do your engine fire test, so that would be right here, right below your throttle quadrant, on the bottom right. I mean, sorry, bottom left. Click it and you hold it. You should have a fault and a APU detect an op. So detect an op it means it's unoperative. Uh, so hold it. It should it's good. And then hold it the right click, uh, right click your mouse button to hold it to the right, and you should have all these lights show up, and you should have a bell. That means it's working fine. And then you move on. Now you align your IRS. Let me see here. Disregard this. I'm just checking something. Uh, okay. By default. PMDG should have IRS options selected to fast, 30 seconds. If you want realistic, you can do that. It's in your options. So you'll just go to uh, FS, I'm sorry, PMDG setup, options, uh, simulation, and then IRS options. Um, just, just to let you know, it takes about 10 minutes to align the IRS. The IRS, say that too fast. Um, so uh, sometimes I do it, sometimes I don't, but today I'm just going to do 30 seconds, which is unrealistic, but whatever. So to align your IRS, IRS, gosh, you want to go to the back, all the way up here. This is your IRS alignment location, I guess. First thing you want to do is test everything. So on the bottom of this switch right here, there's two switches that you can press. You want to go to the bottom left click it and you should see a bunch of lights show up if it happens and it goes away quickly then it's good it just does a quick it does a a quick test and then right click it you want to go to uh, heading STS so right click it all the way to that and then 
these two switches right here, let me see if that's next, yes, these two switches here you want to set them to a line and it should say on DC on both and after a while it should go away and say a line. Um, so that's set. Um, after a while it should say in your FMC set GPS position that means you have to put um, like I'll show you after hold on just wait 30 seconds if that's the option you have and should be about so to set your FMC see it says enter IRS position that means it's ready so go to FMC First, uh, uh, and then press clear to get rid of that message. Go to position and net. <clears throat> Oops. Um, if you have default ground crew, it's really tough because you got to be in the perfect spot in your taxi pos uh, position and then to activate them you open up your um, your cargo areas um, and in the PMDG to do that you have to do it from the FMC um, so I'll show you real quick you can use whichever FMC here I'm gonna use this one so you go to FS actions doors and then you go open cargo forward and open cargo aft um, to get to the second page you obviously go to next page here and then it should open the doors and now if you're a if you're perfectly in in uh, in your parking position the default air, uh, vehicles should start moving and they should go over to your cargo um, so yeah that's for me I have uh, I have ground services X so I just activate it whenever I want okay so now that your IRS is aligned <sighs> go to position and net which is in your FMC so you click FMC um, and then you click over to position and net click latest uh, I mean click last position it should load up down here and then and then copy like you're basically copy and pasting it so you paste it right here and then you're done it's your IRS is aligned and then what you do is you go back to your IRS and you right click it and you set it to nav so um, so you see it's set to a line you want to set it to nav so right click it right click it and that should be good and then to know that it worked you should have all your uh, your PFDs should uh, look normal again so if it doesn't if it still looks black and yellow then it didn't something's wrong you didn't do something right um, which just if that's the case and just kind of I don't know go, if you remember how to do everything go back and retry it okay so next thing to do alright 
So now you enter all your waypoints. Okay, this is a this is the tricky part, sort of. So on the first page, on the position and net, it should reset to this. You put in your reference airport. For me, it's Las Vegas. So you put that in. Go to root. It should remember your or, or your origin. So paste it there, and then put in your destination airport, KPDX. Put in your flight number. I don't know. I'm gonna do. This isn't important. You don't have to do this, but I'm gonna put WestJet two zero one. And then, okay. So this is there's two things you can do here. I have something called <coughs> Professional Flight Planner X. So basically, I just put in my depa my departure airport and my arrival airport and the type of aircraft I'm using, and it basically calculates everything else. So it puts my route together. Um, so all I have to do is go to export and then up, like select Microsoft Flight Simulator X for my for my weather add-on, and then. Uh, select PMDG 737 and then um, it should load to the flight plans now in order to load that up I have to go to KLAS I gotta type in what the exact name is of the export which is KLAS KPDX01 KPDX where's PDX 01 and then you put you paste it in in the, the company route and it should load up. It will say uh, um, activate and you, you click activate and then execute and then all your routes should load up. Um, but I'm assuming you don't have that so you have to put them in manually. So basically what you do is it's just like your real your probably like the other FMC that you were using It's probably the exact same thing. So um, my first waypoint is OAL so I'm going direct so you just basically you type it in and you um, this column right here is your waypoints this column right here is via so your jetways so whenever you have a jetway you paste you you um, enter it here um, where am I okay so now I'm going through jetway uh, J92 and then I'm going to Yaren. So put Jetway there and then Yaren. Then next waypoint is direct to Moxie. Um one important thing also, you wanna there's a I forgot what the website's called, but there's a website where you can upgrade or update your FMS or the FMC. Um, because sometimes, well, the default, like, say, I know you just got your PMDG, um, it could be out of date, so some of the waypoints that I'm entering, like, say, if you're do trying to do the exact same flight as me, some of the waypoints that you entered might not be the same, or it might not even be existent, because your nav data might be out of date, and that website is actually called navgraph.com. You go there, it's like five bucks to update it, so it's really important to do that to keep it up to date. Especially if you fly in Vatsim, because they keep their their waypoints and jetways up to date. Okay, so it's a short flight. Check the Moxie, activate it, and then you go to execute. And it should load up right here. And it's good. And then you want what you want to do is select your departure. I'm going to be using Sheed Seven. And I want to use a transition OAL. Um, now, to I know which SIDs and stars I, I want to use because a I've flown out of Las a Las Vegas a lot, so I I've almost memorized which SIDs I need. Um, secondly, um, I have uh, PFPX sometimes would post which SID I want I need to use, um, and also. Um, what is it? There was another program that I used to use called EFB Data Provider, and they all, that was an easy way to kind of figure out which SIDs and stars I need to use. So if you have a hard time choosing which one that you need, those are a couple programs that worked for me. 
Uh, so transition is OAL. And I haven't decided which runway I'm taking off yet. Topcat is basically takeoff performance calculator. Uh, so update the weather. It's from the current winds, which is 230 at 4 knots. It says I want to take off at runway 25 right. So um, that's exactly what I'm going to do, which is most of the time at Las Vegas. Most of the time you're taking off from either 25 left or 25 right. So execute it. That should be good. And you go to departure arrival again, and then you choose your arrival star. So I'll be using Moxie 6. And there's a couple of them. So again, you want to find out which runway you'll be landing at. And this could change. If you're flying on VATSIM, ATC could give you a completely different runway. If you request a certain runway, they could change it. Um, so it's a little tough there. But um, ILS 28 left. And Moxie, is it available for this arrival? Oh, wait, no, it is. And there's no transition for me, so execute. And then check your legs. Go to the, the legs page. Scroll down, make sure everything is there. Um, and make sure you don't have any root discontinuities. If you do, just um, say if you did, just select. The f like say right here was a root discontinuity. All you'd have to do is select OAL and then p paste it where the root discontinuity is and then it'll get rid of it. That for me was really tough to find out when I was learning this aircraft. Okay. Next you want to go to initial ref. So uh, this is to calculate your gross weight, zero fuel weight, how much reserves you want to use, the cost index, blah blah blah, all that stuff. Everything in uh, the square you want, it's important to have. You cannot take off without it. So to get your zero fuel weight and your gross weight just click on zero fuel weight once it'll load the zero, your current zero fuel, zero fuel weight and uh, down here and then you click zero, zero fuel weight again gosh that's a tongue twister uh, and it should load everything up so that's an easy way uh, I usually use five pounds of reserves my cost index varies based on which virtual airline you're flying for uh, but I usually use a hundred you can go up to a thousand if you want, but that's just unrealistic. And then it calculates based on your fuel weight and your payload what your uh, recommended crews should be. So it says 35,000. Uh, I forget which direction of flight. Like I don't know if it's odd or even, but I'm just going to do 35,000. Uh, click execute and then go to N1 limit. Here you basically check off, um, or you, you're basically setting which, how much power for takeoff or climb you, you want. Um, so I can't explain it exactly because I'm not entirely sure, but I believe this is the most powerful takeoff. And I believe climb two is the, is the fastest climb, so you want to get the cruise as fast as you can. Um, if you have autopilot on, it'll, it'll calculate the fastest way um, with the fastest N1 and you know the, the quickest um, positive rate of climb. Takeoff flaps you want to set to 15. Um, it's always 15. Uh, apparently, I used to think it was 5, but when you're flying, apparently t flaps 15 is a, a default takeoff flap for basically any aircraft except for an Airbus, if any Boeing aircraft. Um, to calculate your center of gravity, just click it once, it should load it up, and then click it again, and then you, you have your trim setting. So 4.41, go down to your trim wheel, zoom in a little bit, 4.41, it's set to 4 right now, so I don't know, just, you know, it doesn't have to be exact, but there, it's roughly 4.41. Um, and then click V1, V rotate, and V2, um, it'll Indicate that that will give you your V your V ref speeds, um, and then that's good. Press next page and enter your wind. So, for me, it's for me my winds are 
two three zero at four knots. So I'm gonna put that in two three zero at four knots. Um, oh yeah, it'll take it'll delete your takeoff speeds. That's okay. Um, select whether you have a dry, wet, or icy runway. Um, we have a dry runway today, so I'm gonna leave that. For you, if you don't have a weather add-on, one way that you could figure out what your winds are is right here. Just press Shift Z like once then 217 at 4 it's not as accurate as my weather add-on is but it's it's something um, so that's set you basically your FMC is ready to go you can go to fix as well um, enter your current airport this is for situational awareness it lets you know how far or how close you are to the airport so I want a 35 nautical mile diameter around the airport indicated on my on my PFP uh, on the, f I mean the uh, uh, flight display or whatever the, the nav map. Um, so to do that, just press uh, slash, whichever, and then 35, um, and then again slash 10 because I want 10 nautical miles, and then slash four, four nautical miles. So that's a good situational awareness. And then go to the next page, and you can do the same for your arrival airport. So KPDX. 35 nautical miles, 10 nautical miles, 4 nautical miles. Done. So that's set. Um, I usually have this page open for whenever I want to load cargo doors or anything. And then this one is my actual FMC. So I'm going to start loading my aircraft. Press boarding. Not sure how they're actually in, going in the aircraft because I don't have the door open yet. <laughs> okay. So, after you set your FMC, the um, last thing you should do is your takeoff page. The next thing on the checklist is to turn on your fuel pump. This will, this, I'm assuming the APU uses the fuel from this side of the, of the, of the, uh, uh, of the fuel tank. So you want to have a pump on so that the fuel flows perfectly. Um, and then you want to start your APU. So click it on and then hold it on start and then you should have a lower oil pressure that means it's starting and this should go all the way up do it like a self check it should go all the way down uh, wait for that to happen it takes a couple of, a second or two like, or like 30 seconds For some reason it says APU fault, that's not cool. Hmm. There it goes. Awesome. It's almost done. Okay, 
So when it's done, it should level off at 4. You should have a blue light that, com that, that shows up here. APU Gen Off Bus. You want to select um, the two generators. So the middle two switches, you click on and on. Now your APU is running. Um, you want to check that your APU bleed is on. That's the middle switch over here. And your engine bleed. So that's the two outer switches. Those are set to on. They should be down. Um, and then the AC voltmeter. Now we're switching power supplies. So you want to set this twice to APU generator. Now the APU is powering everything in the aircraft. Okay. You want to turn on. If you have the yellow light, the master want to turn that master caution off. And the aircraft is basically ready now. We just all, now all we have to do is. Right now is when you would get clearance from ATC, and then you would put in your squawk and all that stuff. And then. Yeah. So Max is basically getting ready for engine startup. Let me just finish. Oh wait, I can actually do this now. Um, go to your FMC. Go to F FS Actions, Ground Connections. You can turn off Air Conditioning Unit, Air Start Unit, and Ground Power. Turn those off. And then you want to set your, your frequencies so there's no ATC that I'll be flying with but I'm just going to simulate that I'm going to 1 to 2.8 which is Unicom and then the squawk if you're on VATSIM 1 2 0 0 means VFR um, 2 2 0 0 means IFR so you want to have it 2 2 0 0 because we're IFR set the current ATM pressure you want your altimeter set, so just press B. And it'll select the most recent altimeter. Um, also, I'm going to go to website. i got to make sure something. So I'm using the Sheet 7 departure. You don't have to do this, but it's always good to kind of understand the charts. So I'm taking off from 25, right? I think it was. <laughs> so this one, I'll be going to RB R Bell, up to Ropper, which is 7,000. So my initial altitude would be 7,000, then 9,000, and then 14, and then up the cruise. Okay. So initial altitude 7,000 for me. Um, you want to set your, IR, your IAS indicated airspeed to 250 because that's the speed limit under 10,000. Um, SIDS and stuff we already did. That's okay. Fever speeds we already did. Elevator trim we already did. And then disconnect your um, jetway. So my, my add-on will do that. We're basically getting ready for departure now. Uh, make sure all your doors are closed. Close that door. And then close my cargo doors. Go back to menu. Okay, perfect. And then you want your generator bus transfer switch. That's this switch right here. It should already be down in auto, so that's good. Fuel pumps you want all on. So center, right, forward, forward, and aft. Uh, you want anti-collision lights on. So that's this switch right next to the two white ones. Uh, really important to turn your packs off. Otherwise, you will not be able to start your engines. So turn your left and right pack off. That's these two switches. 
then make sure your thrust is set to idle and your fuel cutoff switches are down. So that's set. Now we're st ready for engine start and push back. Um, actually, real quick, you can set up, uh, get rid of your master caution if you have one. And you can also set up your display. So I like turning all these stuff on, I like having the meters and the, the little, uh, I don't even know what that's called. Turn that on, turn that on, that on, that on, and, and terrain on. You can do the same for the first officer if you want. I don't turn on waypoints because you're going to get a warning saying excess data. You don't need waypoints really. So just leave those off. I turn everything else but waypoints on. Okay. Um, prepare for pushback and departure. Make sure your auto throttle is off. You don't want that stuff on yet. Alright. So when you're ready for pushback, go to FS Actions, Ground Connections, turn your wheel chucks off, so turn, um, remove them. Hello, Captain. We are ready for pushback. <sighs> and then I gotta wait for these guys to get ready. it's pretty easy start with engine 2 so with your your middle but the middle switch here right click it to go to engine 2 and then your, your the right engine uh, switch here set it to ground and then so it's a left click and you should have start valve open and the engine should should start powering up right here when this says 18% you go to your to the second fuel cutoff switch and put it up and the engine sh should start so wait for that to happen Wait for the uh, for the N1 here to go to about 20, or wait for it to slow down before you start the other engine. So 20.1, and then set this back to both, and then set uh, the right uh, engine switch to continuous. So right click it once, and then do the same with the set with the first engine. So set this to the left engine. Go set that to ground the engine switch and then wait for it to go to 18 percent or 20 percent I think I think it's 20 percent actually but it doesn't really matter so put it up and then your engine should start Okay, so once it's started and at 20 or 21, when it's the same as both for both engines, um, set that control switch to both, and then set this control switch to continuous, and then that should be good to go. 
Alright, um... Now you want to turn on your engine generator switches. This is so that we can go from APU powering the aircraft to the engines power powering the aircraft. So for this, just click the, the two outer switches on the, on the uh, generator portion of the upper uh, overhead panel. Uh, click that, and then click that down, and then APU gen should be off, and then now the, the engines should be powering the aircraft. And then select, select which engine generator you want to use. So right now it's set to APU gen. So on the AC voltmeter, click gen one. So and then I gotta set parking brakes. Uh, then turn your APU off and then turn your APU bleed off which is the middle switch over here and then make sure you turn your packs back on to auto make sure this middle one is set to auto as well and then your PTOT probe heats that's way back here turn those on it's, you should see a bunch of orange lights here that go out. Uh, window heat as required, all that stuff, anti-ice, and uh, we don't need that because it's it's above 10 degrees outside. When that goes below 10 degrees Celsius, you want to turn anti-ice on. So that'll happen when we're climbing to cruise. And you want yaw damper on. Right, if if you can't see yaw damper, just click this white thing here, and then it should go away. Turn your all damper on. Set your flaps that you have indicated in your FMC, so it's 15. So press F7 five times. Auto brake, you set it to RTO. Uh, taxi lights and runway turn off lights, you want on. And also re retract your uh, uh, belly lights. I call them belly lights, I don't know why. In so this knob right here set your cruising altitude so 35,000 feet and what else is there TCAS turn it on that's this right here turn it all the way to the right and then press the middle switch to test you should hear TCAS test passed it should be doing this with the displays TCAS test passed awesome um and then now we're cleared for taxi. So usually if you're playing on VATSIM you go to airnav.com, you go to airport chart, open link a new tab, and then you can f basically find where you want to go. So I believe I was at Bravo two. So I want to taxi via Bravo and Bravo one. It looks like wherever that is. <laughs> so start your taxi. And that's not.